Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena your name amen glory be to god hallelujah today we'll be looking at lessons from the life of jonah lessons from the life of jonah there are things that I like us to look at the life of this great prophet of god when god gives you an assignment he expects a complete obedience I want to say that again. I said, when God gives you an assignment, He expects a complete obedience. God does not expect us to violate or to walk away from the instruction He has given to us. He's not expecting us to give him reasons why we cannot obey him. If anyone is looking for a reason why they can't do the will of God, they will find those reasons. If, I, if I'm looking for a reason why I'm not going to serve God or be committed in the kingdom, I, I'm going to find those reasons. And if I, if I look for reasons why I should save him, I will also find those reasons. But sometimes people could allow their need to extract them from purpose. And I said, sometimes people could allow their need to extract them from their purpose. Now, if you look at Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, it said, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. This is not the word of your pastor. This is not the word of your apostle, your friend, or your mom or your dad. This was a word of God that came to Jonah. And in verse 3, it said, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. This was... God's instruction for Jonah. Verse 3 said, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tashis. He rose up to flee. Jonah never meditated on the word God gave to him. Jonah never accepted the responsibility of his assignments. Jonah allowed his personal issues to extract him from his calling. And sometimes people could go through that because they are allowing the things they are going through to put their destiny on a hold, or they are God giving assignments on a hold. The reason why I can't do this is because of this or that. Sometimes when God gives you an assignment, it may be considered, or you can look at it and say, this is an impossible tax. God expects you to depend on him to carry out the assignments he has called you into. He wants you to depend on him because if you don't depend on him, you won't be able to carry out God's instruction for your life. And here we saw that Jonah made a decision to move to a direction that is not the direction of his assignments. Offense is one of the reasons why people could abandon their assignments. The enemy can come with offense, situations that led to offense, situations that led to accusation, 
situations that have potential to produce frustration. And that could make an individual to either abandon the assignment or renew their mind with God's word and continue to do the will of God. For Jonah, he refused to walk in obedience. Why did Jonah refuse? Because Jonah never thought that God has a plan for Nineveh. For Jonah, he doesn't care what happens to the people. If they all perish, good. If they are alive, oh, why are they alive? They should all die. Jonah didn't see the, the, the picture of God's redemption plan when he made the decision to go to Tashis. You know, sometimes in the ministry, God can call you to do something and you start doing it and then you start seeing challenges. Now, if you are not rooted in God's word, challenges can root you out of your place of purpose. If you're not rooted in the word of God, challenges can root you out from where God has positioned you. And this has happened to so many people in the body of Christ. Challenges, offense, accusation, bitterness has robbed them the plan and the purpose of God for their life. Why did Jonah refuse to do the instruction? Jonah refused because to Jonah, those are not the people God should have mercy on. To Jonah, those are, that is not the place where he should be. You know, a lot of people want to tell God where they should be. God, I want to go here. God, I want to do this. God, I want to do that. No. It is God, what will you have me do? It is God, Lord, what do you want me to do? And how do you want me to do it? Jonah was not making the kingdom agenda his priority. He was allowing his flesh to extract him from the mission. Sometimes in life, God may lead us into something that we don't really like. We don't like it doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. <laughs> or oh, this is not convenient for me. And a lot of people are waiting for when it should be convenient for them to obey God, convenient for them to do the word of God, convenient for them to Follow God's instruction. When everything is okay, when I send all my kids to college, when all my children graduate, then I'll be ready for God. When I get a better job, I'll be ready for God. When, okay, when I'm able to pay all my debts off, I'll be ready for God. So we always put on hold, put on hold the things that God will have us do because we feel that these things happening around us could be a hindrance to obeying God. But listen, those who do the will of God do it out of decision. I want to say that again. I said, those who do the will of God, they do it out of decision. You need to make the decision to obey God. You need to make that decision. So no, no matter what is going on, no matter what the situation is, I am going to obey God. No matter what I'm going through, I am going to obey God. No matter what is happening, I'm going to make the will of God a priority. Bible said in Jonah 1 verse 3, said, But Jonah rose up to flee unto touches from the presence of the Lord. Why was Jonah running from the presence of God? Why was Jonah running? Because to Jonah, the instruction that God is giving was what he's not willing to do. 
there are many people who are not ready for the will of God for their life. You know, some people can pray, oh God, use me. Oh God, use me. And then his, it, people start calling them, pray for me, do this for me, do that for me, preach for me, do this, do that, you know. And, and they finally said, people are using me. People are taking advantage of me. They are using me. When you ask God to use you, it is people that will place the man on your anointing. When, when you want to pray, don't go and pray, oh Lord, use me, oh Lord, use me. When you are not ready for people to call you in, can you pray for me? Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Because when you ask Lord, use you, you're calling for responsibility. I don't think a lot of people know what they're praying about. Oh Lord, use me. Lord, use me mightily in this generation. When you say God, use you, people begin to come. Crazy people, unstable people, mad people. People that can, can, that can take you for granted, people that cannot, they start coming. God wants you to teach them. God wants you to minister them. Some will bring you good news. Some will bring you bad news. Some will, some, some will mix things up. Some will help you build things. So you're going to meet all kinds of people when you pray this prayer, Lord, use me. So when people say, Lord, use them, then I say, like, oh, I don't like the way you guys are using me. You guys are abusing me. You are taking me for granted. No, no, no. You pray that God should use you. So it's, it's part of God using you. You know, a lot of people don't like that. They like the parts where everything is glorious. Everything is beautiful. Everything is working well. They like that part. For Jonah, he never wanted to go to Nineveh. He doesn't want that city. He doesn't want to relate with them. He doesn't want to have anything to do with them. Jonah was running from the presence of God. How many people today are running from their kingdom responsibility, are giving reasons, excuses why they have not been able to do what God asked them to do? The fear of people, the fear of where will the money come from, the fear of who is going to support me, all of those fears are not necessary when you choose to trust God and do his word. Jonah was running from the presence of God and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go to them with Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. You know, Jonah have money. You know, when you have money, be careful because money gives you option. Money can either be used for good things or money can be used to do things that can destroy humanity, can destroy life. Jonah paid his fare. Jonah wasn't a broke, a broke fellow, a broke prophet. Jonah had some money. So he said, God, if you think I'm going that way with you, I'm not interested. Okay, where is, the, where is the boat going to touch us? Okay, I paid my fare. And he went and sat down. That was not his roots. He knew he was doing what was wrong. When God gives you an instruction, obedience is the seed you sow for supernatural partnership with God. When God gives you an instruction, obedience is the seed you sow there are things God have told me to do, and sometimes in the natural, I know only God could help me to do those things because if I look at myself, I know I'm not that good. I know I'm not going to be able to do that. Only God can help me. But you see, a heart of obedience is the heart that will prosper, is the heart that will flourish, is the heart that will succeed, a heart of obedience. When God tells you to go left, you go left. When God tells you to go right, you go right. Whatever instruction is given to you is the foundation for your productivity. Jonah walked away from the presence of God. Make the decision not to allow previous situations and things that have happened in the past to extract you from a destiny, from divine calling. Make the decision. You know, I used to say to people, you can't do the will of God 
without someone insulting you, abusing you, or saying something to you that you don't like, some can accuse you, some will some matter of things before you. And if you're not careful, you can be distracted by what the things you say. But Jonah, he has no vision, he has no focus, he has no direction, he had no passion to do the will of God. Jonah actually was forced into God's will. The will of God, Jonah was not the one who decided to, to move himself to Tarshish. It was God who made him get to that city. I think God should not be the one forcing us to do his will. We should be the ones that are responding in obedience to what God has spoken to us. Whatever God has spoken to us, us, we're expected to walk in obedience. If God tells you to go left, just go left. If He tells you to go right, go right. And the lesson we need to learn from Jonah is that Jonah was not ready for what God was ready for. How many people today are in a place of not being ready for what God is ready for? Not being ready. Maybe just sit down and criticize. Maybe just sit down and gossip. How many people today are really ready for what God is ready for? For Jonah, he wasn't ready for the will of God. For Jonah, he has not prepared himself to make the voice of God his final authority in his life. Was so how he departed from the presence of God. He, he started life in his own ways. Be careful. We should be careful that we don't do things our way. Our way is not God's way. God's way is the way of the word of God. Our way is not God's way. So you need to know what God is saying and what he wants you to do that you, you don't behave like Jonah here that you need to be forced into the will of God. Disobedience has consequence, except to repent from the action of disobedience. I said disobedience has consequence. Disobedience has consequence. God told you to do something. God told you to stand with someone. God told you to support this person. And then you look at them and say, no, I'm not going to support them. No, I'm not going to support them. They are using me. They are abusing me. You know, you see, that, that's not going to take us far. That cannot help us. Jonah was running from his destiny. Jonah was running from his purpose. Jonah was not seeing the big picture. In verse 4, the Bible said, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. Not because God was wicked, but because he was a loving God. And there was a great, there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried, every man according to his gods, and cast forth their wares that were in the ship. Now, if we look at this scripture, you notice that people start losing their property, their things, their items because of Jonah. Your, dis, your, your disobedience can affect the destinies of other people. There are people whose destiny will be affected by our disobedience. I want to read this scripture in another translation. My disobedience can affect the destinies of other people, you know, and my obedience can also impact their destiny. Glory be to God. From the message translation, it said in verse 4, it said, but God sent a huge storm at the sea. He sent a huge storm. <laughs> the wave <laughs> the ship was about to break into pieces. The sailors were terrified. 
they call out in desperation to their gods. They threw everything they were carrying over the board to lighten the ship. But, but that's not the problem. They lost things because they thought maybe the weight of these things were carrying. But they never knew it was Jonah's disobedience, the wrong person joining your ship. They got into trouble not because they have any problem with God. They got into trouble because they carried the wrong person. <laughs> Sometimes in life, your troubles come from people that you decided to help. How many of us have helped someone before and then we regretted of helping them? We felt bad because they took advantage of our innocence, they took advantage of our love, they took advantage of our kindness. They were throwing everything into the ship, throwing everything over the board and to lighten the ship. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down into the hole of the ship to take a nap. Look at the prophet. Look at Jonah. Jonah is now taking a nap. Oh, and people are in trouble. He was sound asleep. The captain came to him and said, what is this? Jonah was behaving like someone that was not responsible. <laughs> what is this? They were asking Jonah, what is this? Sleeping. Get up. Pray to God. Pray to your God. Maybe your God will see we are in trouble and rescue us. This man was talking to Jonah. Pray to your God. Jonah was not doing anything about the situation. Then they said up to one another, let's get to the bottom of this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, sometimes people get into trouble because of who they are connected to. They could have had a very smooth journey, a very beautiful journey, if not for Jonah. This is why we have to be sensitive of those who come into our lives. It's important that you don't open the gate of your life to everyone you see. It's important you don't open the gate of your life to everything you hear. Jonah was their problem. Jonah missed it and created crisis. He missed it and created crisis. One of the greatest prayer we need to pray this morning is that, Lord, may I be a blessing to people and not a problem to them. May I be a blessing to people and not a problem to them. Hallelujah. May I be a blessing to people. Now, from the contemporary English, he said, finally, the sailors got together and said, let's ask our gods to show us who caused us this trouble. The people are now making inquiry. Why this? They, they are not used to this kind of tr problem. Sometimes your life is going well, smooth, beautiful, and someone just came into your life and started causing more troubles. And he said, finally, the sailors got together and said, let us ask our gods to show us who caused all this trouble. It turned out to be Jonah. They started asking him, are you the one who brought all this trouble on us? What business are you in? What business are you in? Where do you come from? What is your country? Who are your people? Jonah answered, I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Where, when the sailors heard this, they were frightened because Jonah has already told them he was running from the Lord. Then said, 
Do you know what you have done? The storm kept getting worse until finally the sailor asked him, what should we do with you to make this sea to calm down? Jonah told them, throw me into the sea and it will calm down. Look at it. Jonah said, throw me into the sea. If Jonah was not asking them to throw him to the sea because he had an expectation that God would send a fish to take him to Nineveh. Jonah wanted to drown and die. Jonah wanted to just die. Instead of going to Nineveh, it's better for me to die. That's like a suicide mentality. That's like a suicide. You know, Jonah was not ready for God. Even at the point of death, Jonah wants to die and never get to the Nineveh. It's better for him to die. And they said, I am in the course of this great, terrible storm. I'm the cause of this great, terrible storm. The sailors tried their best to throw to the shore, but they could not do it. And the storm kept getting worse. The people were having, why would we do this to you? The, the, but the storm kept getting worse. Sometimes in life, we connect with people who make our life keep getting worse. It just keeps getting worse because we we'll carry them in this journey of life, not knowing that they are not connected to purpose. Can I say this to you? Be sensitive to who comes into your life. Otherwise, they can interrupt your journey. Be sensitive to those who comes into your life. It's not everyone who is a prophet that is a prophet of God. There are prophets of Baal. <laughs> The Bible talks about the prophet of Baal. The Bible also talks about false prophets. So we need to know who we, who, who we carry. That someone is a Christian doesn't mean it's your team member. That someone is a Christian doesn't mean that both of you can work together. You got to be led by the Spirit of God to open the door of your life. Because when you open the door of your life to a wrong person, they can haunt your purpose, they can haunt your destiny, and they can ruin your future. He said, but the storm keeps getting worse. We're reading the book of Jonah chapter, Jonah chapter one from verse 13. He said, the storm keeps getting worse every minute. So they prayed to the Lord, please don't let us drown for, for taking this man's life. Don't hold us guilty for killing an innocent man. No, Jonah was not innocent. All of this happened because of you wanted it to. Then they threw Jonah over the board and the sea calmed down. Wow. That simply means someone can live your life and you, 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 your life becomes peaceful. Jonah was a real problem. The question this morning is, when people meet with you, what is the experience? Do they get better or do they regret of meeting us? When people meet with us, what do they, do they say, oh God, thank you for this woman of God. Oh God, thank you for this man of God. Oh God, thank you for this brother. Oh God, thank you for this sister. What is the experience of those that meet with you? Do they have to regret for meeting you or are they inspired because they met with you and they had a relationship with you? Our life should not be a life like the life of Jonah. Our life should be a life that inspires people to go after God. Our life should be a life of obedience where we consistently, faithfully follow God's instruction. The Bible said, and the sea come down. The sailors were so terrified that they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made all kinds of promises. The Lord sent big fish to swallow Jonah. The Lord sent big fish. Why will Jonah get to this point? God have decided that nobody would do this assignment except Jonah. <laughs> Jonah must get to Nineveh. See, we shouldn't get to this point where the Lord has to force us or situation has to force us to do what we're expected to do. 
what happened here was that Jonah was forced into his assignment. And the big fish, and the Lord sent a big fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Disobedience can lead to frustration. Disobedience can lead to frustration. Disobedience can bring you into a place where you are not comfortable. Disobedience can bring you into a place where you lose your peace and your joy. And this is why it's important that when the Lord gives you an assignment or the Lord gives you an instruction, you make that instruction your priority. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I want to be a kind of person that I'm always ready to obey God, whether it's convenient or not, ready to obey God, ready to do the will of God. If you think like me, that you're passionate to do the will of God, you, you will know that one key thing in doing the will of God is to cultivate a lifestyle of obedience. If you want to see the power of God, if you want to see miracles, if you want to see signs and wonders, Walking in obedience is key to it. The success of Daniel never came from his ability. It came from his obedience. The success of Joseph was not, uh, didn't come from his, his ability. It came from his obedience. To the degree you obey God and make his word your priority will determine how effective and productive you'll be. Jonah was distracted. Jonah lost the focus. Jonah was not willing to do what God instructed him to do. And sometimes in life, people get offended and abandon the will of God. People get frustrated and they walk away from the will of God. People run into opposition and they walk away from God. No. Be a kind of person who fight the good fight of it. Be a kind of person that situations don't conquer you. Be a kind of person who is ready to follow God in good times, in bad times, in times that are not favorable, when the money is not coming in, when business is not working well, when the job is not paying well, but you stayed faithful to God. God honors faithfulness. He honors it when you are faithful, when you are diligent, when you are consistent, when you are committed. And there is someone here today Learn from the life of Jonah. Disobedience and rebellion is expensive in the school of faith. Very expensive. Disobedience and rebellion is expensive joke. You, 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 you're going to lose a lot of things by being a person of disobedience. A lot to lose. Sometimes God will send people to help you but because this person is in disobedience, all those that God sent to help them have abandoned them. Sometimes God will open a door for us and said, be faithful. You're going to walk into this door. Then because we're so positioned and challenges, we got offended. I said, well, I'm tired. I'm not going to do this anymore. And then that door that God has opened, strangers begin to go through that door. Be faithful in your calling. Whatever the calling is, be faithful to it. Whatever God has asked you to do, stay with it. Sometimes it takes 10 years to reap the harvest. Sometimes it takes 20 years. Sometimes it takes 30 years. Sometimes it takes five years. Sometimes it takes two years. Sometimes it takes two months, one week, three weeks, five seconds. But one thing you should be sure that when you're dealing with God, make obedience, obedience a priority. Obey his voice. Obey his will and stay focused. Don't try to prove to God, I have the money, so I don't need you. I have the money, I don't need you. I can pay my way like Jonah did. Jonah never got to that destination called Tashis. He never got to that place. He, the journey ended in the middle of the sea. The journey ended in the sea. Jonah was not able to cross over. But well, God had a plan for Jonah. If God has a plan for your life, 
Obedience is the seed you have to sow daily. Sow the seed of obedience. Sow the seed of diligence. You know, some of my partners here knew that uh, we're doing some building in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. And we'll keep sacrificing. We'll keep sacrificing to ensure that this project is completed. Sometimes it takes a lot of obedience to let go things to ensure that the work of God makes progress. Can I say this to you? Don't look for shortcuts. Don't look for an easy route. Just follow God's word and make it your priority. And you will see him bless you. You will see him open doors for you. When a person is in the place of obedience, they will be in command of their destiny. When you are in the place of obedience, God can tell you, give this out. Do this, do that, do this, do that. Whatever the instruction is, obedience will open the door for a word, harvest and honor. Walking in obedience is the foundational truth we need to learn from the lesson from the life of Jonah. That Jonah was not someone who walked in obedience. And we, look, we saw the consequences. He has no business being in that sea. He has no business being in that boat. His place of assignment was different from where he was. If you want to succeed, pay attention to what God is saying. Not just to what you're feeling or what you're thinking or what you think should be done. What you think should be done may not be the will of God. But what God has said that is the will of God. I'd like us to pray. I'd like us to pray that, Lord, whatever instruction you have given to me, I will walk in obedience. I will walk in obedience. Holy Spirit, I will walk in obedience. I will listen to the instruction. I will listen. Somebody pray in the Spirit that the instructions of God, the things God has asked you to do. You know, sometimes God can ask us to do something and someone wants to talk us out of it. Someone wants to make us feel like, hey, that's not the right thing. Walking in obedience will lead to supernatural success, will lead to supernatural victory. Father, we thank you this morning. We'll give you praise because your word is true. I pray for everyone that is in this Bible study today, Holy Spirit, and those that will listen to this broadcast, that they will learn from the life of Jonah, that obedience will be their priority. Responding to the leadership of the Holy Spirit will be our priority. Thank you, Father. I pray for strength. I pray for focus. I pray for the boldness to continue in the will of God. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. This is our Bible study today. And if you're watching this Bible study, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's written and teaching on YouTube. And you can watch us every day on finishworktv.com. I'd like us to pray over our giving. You have an offering to give. We just want to pray over our offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for being part of this broadcast today, this Bible study. We'll bring our offering before you because you are the high priest of our confession. In the name of Jesus, we'll give this offering by faith and we expect miracles of open door, miracles of preferential treatment, and miracles of supernatural increase. We'll call forth harvest of a death free home. We'll call forth harvest of a new opportunity to do your will, or comfort harvest of abundance increase, excessive increase, open door, and greater manifestation of your spirit. Thank you, Father. We pray for everyone this morning, and those that are watching, that are giving right now, that your power and your anointing rest upon their finances. May you continue to flourish, may you continue to prosper, may you continue to succeed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we prayed. Amen. You can go to finishworktv.com and slash giving. You can go to finishworktv.com and slash giving. On PayPal is faithmanteaching at gmail.com. On PayPal is faithmanteaching at gmail.com. Thank you for being part of this Bible study. Until I come your way soon, please don't forget this. There is greatness in you, and Jesus is coming soon. Bye-bye.